So what if everything you thought you knew about the very first chapter of human history on an entire continent was just wrong? What if the timeline wasn't just off by a little bit, but by thousands and thousands of years? Today, we are gonna dive into one single archeological site that did exactly that. It forced everyone to rethink the entire story of how the Americas were populated. You know, for generations, this was one of the absolute biggest questions in archaeology. And for a really long time, scientists were pretty sure they had the answer. It was this foundational story, the one that got taught in all the textbooks and was basically accepted as fact. And that story was called the Clovis First Model. And hey, it was a neat story, right? It was elegant, it was simple, and it was backed up by all this evidence from all over North America, these really distinctive, beautifully made spear points. The theory went that these big game hunters, the Clovis people, were the pioneers. They were the very first Americans. That timeline was basically set in stone, or so everybody thought. But of course, the story was about to get a whole lot more complicated. And the challenge came from this place, a pretty unassuming little spot, a sandstone overhang tucked away in a creek valley in Washington County, Pennsylvania. This is the Meadowcraft Rock Shelter, and it was holding a secret that would end up sparking a scientific battle for decades. The way it was found is just, it's almost unbelievable. It wasn't some big team of archaeologists on a grand expedition. Nope, it was found by a guy named Albert Miller, a local farmer whose family had actually owned the land since 1795. He was just walking around and noticed some weird-looking stone tools and bones that had been kicked out of a fresh groundhog hole. Think about that. A curious farmer and a groundhog were about to completely rewrite history. So fast forward to 1973. A team from the University of Pittsburgh, led by J.M. Adivazio, starts a really systematic, state-of-the-art excavation. And what they found was basically a perfect time capsule. The geology of the shelter had created this incredible environment, where sediment was just gently raining down from the roof over millennia, perfectly preserving this incredibly deep and perfectly layered record of everyone who had ever lived there. And as they dug deeper and deeper, past the layers from recent history, past the layers of early farming, even past the layers of the Ice Age runters, they just kept going. And the radiocarbon dates that came back from the deepest fire pits were just staggering. Some of them dated as far back as 16,000 years ago. That is nearly 5,000 years before the Clovis people were even supposed to have arrived on the continent. Now, you don't just go and rewrite the first chapter of human history on a continent without a fight. The findings from Meadowcraft sent absolute shockwaves through the archaeological world. I mean, it was a direct challenge to the established, accepted Clovis First Dogma, and it kicked off what the excavators themselves called an intense and sometimes acrimonious debate that would literally last for decades. Okay, so let's break down the central conflict. On one side, you have the Meadowcroft team with their evidence, these impossibly old dates, a totally unique set of stone tools, and environmental data that suggested a surprisingly mild forest. And on the other side, you had the critics just pushing back hard. They said, no way, the dates have to be contaminated. Those tools, we don't recognize them. And that kind of forest, it just shouldn't have been there, not that close to the Ice Age glaciers. The biggest charge, the one that could have sunk the entire discovery, was contamination. You see, southwestern Pennsylvania is coal country. So the argument was that groundwater must have seeped through the site over the years, carrying ancient carbon particles from all that coal nearby. That would contaminate the charcoal in the fire pits, making them seem thousands of years older than they really were. The entire thing hinged on this one question. Were they right? Well, the Meadowcraft team's first line of defense was just the sheer consistency of their own data. I mean, they didn't just have one or two weird dates, they had over 50 of them, and they all lined up in almost perfect chronological order. The deeper they dug, the older the dates got, which is exactly what you'd expect to see. For contamination to create that kind of perfect pattern, it would have had to seep in with this almost magical, unbelievable precision. And they dismantled that contamination argument piece by piece. It was brilliant. First, the geology. That soft sandstone roof was constantly shedding tiny particles, like a slow-motion waterfall of sand that gently buried and protected each layer from ever mixing. Second, the hydrology. The shelter is actually perched way up high above the creek, which makes a big flood of groundwater extremely unlikely. And then, finally, the nail in the coffin. They sent samples to Oxford University for brand new, super precise AMS dating. The results came back crystal clear. The samples were pure charcoal, and the ancient dates were correct. But beyond the dates, there was cold, hard proof of human hands at work. In those exact same ancient layers, the team uncovered this really distinct and sophisticated collection of stone tools. 
And in a great little tribute, they named it the Miller Complex, in honor of Albert Miller, the farmer who first spotted the site. And listen, this wasn't just a random collection of chipped rocks. This was a seriously sophisticated toolkit. The Miller Complex included this really unique, unfluted lance-shaped spear point, and what's really incredible, these tiny, razor-sharp prismatic blades. This was a technology that was totally, completely different from Clovis. It showed a whole different way of thinking, a different way of making tools, and it existed thousands of years earlier. And here's where it gets even more interesting. This toolkit had echoes of something much, much older, and from a world away. Researchers pointed out that the style of making these blades from a specially prepared core had this distinct resemblance to technologies from the Upper Paleolithic in Eurasia. So this wasn't just pre-Clovis. It was this sophisticated tradition that had potential roots stretching all the way back across the Bering Strait. So if you just step back and look at the timeline, you can really see this whole scientific revolution as it unfolds. For decades, Clovis first wasn't a theory, it was just fact. Then, bam, 1975, Meadowcroft States are published, and the debate just explodes. It took more than 20 years of relentless research, new tests, and painstaking work. But by the 1990s, the tide had turned. The evidence was just too overwhelming to ignore anymore. And today, the idea of a pre-Clovis population is the new consensus, thanks in a huge part to the battle that was fought over this one rock shelter. So what is the legacy of this incredible site? Well, it pushed back the timeline of human arrival by at least 5,000 years. It survived and overcame two decades of the most intense scientific skepticism you can imagine. And by proving its case, it basically gave other archaeologists permission to look for and to actually believe in other super-ancient sites. It single-handedly cracked open the Clovis first model. And in doing that, it completely rewrote the very beginning of the human story in the Americas. You know, the story of Meadowcroft is such a powerful reminder that history is never a closed book. It shows how one single site, discovered totally by chance and then defended by years of rigorous science, can change everything we think we know. It pushed the horizon of our past back once. So it just makes you wonder, right? Where's the next horizon? What other secrets are still buried out there, just waiting to be found?